gonna start a brand new series today and it's gonna be called The Power of Re. The Power of Re. And uh, over the next eight weeks, this is a long series for us. We usually don't go eight weeks, but we're actually gonna do this for eight weeks. It's gonna go all the way through Easter. Um, for the next eight weeks, we are actually um, going to take time and we are going to look at different words in scripture that have the prefix re on it, and we're gonna apply those things to our life. And I'm so excited about some of the words. God has been affirming this so many different ways. Through Clay, he affirmed this in some posts that Clay put up about uh, the words that started with re to K, put up a post and she had no idea the day that she was posting something that was directly feeding in to what God had already worked out in my spirit. And I texted her that night when I saw it and I said, man, you ain't gonna believe this. I said, but we're about to do a whole series called The Power of Re. And so we're gonna, we're gonna do this and it's gonna be awesome and we're gonna to start at a pretty foundational place. And today we're gonna to look at the word rename, rename. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's time for a new name. Come on, that's a theme all throughout scripture. There's a theme in scripture where, where names change. Has anybody ever been through a name change? And I'm not talking about like a Phoebe from Friends name change, right? Where you try to just change your name. out. Of, I'm talking about like you were given a nickname at some point in your life. Has anybody, anybody here got a nickname? Raise your hand if you've ever had a nickname. Anybody wanna share your nickname? Uh, David, what was your nickname? I have many of you. The PG one, the PG one. Yeah. Camel, that makes sense, right? Anybody ever seen him run? And so, yeah, that's why they gave him that name. And so they tell him what they've told me since I've met him, that if you ever see David run, he looks like a camel. And so, that, and he gets them shut, yeah. They say he tries to run faster, but his speed doesn't change, but his shoulders move faster. And so that's how you know he's trying to run fast. So who else? Somebody on this side, who's got a name? Miss Betty, what's your nickname? Sheepdog, because there you go, I like that, sheepdog. Sheepdog, somebody in the middle. Anybody, Timmy, what was your nickname? I'm going to work as Brady Brady. Brady? Brady, Brady. Brady, Brady. All right, Brady, Brady, there you go. There's his nickname. See, we all have these nicknames. Uh, when I was growing up, um, I actually uh, was playing Little League Baseball and I went up a year earlier than most of my friends. And so I was one of the younger ones in the league at the time. There were a couple people our age that moved up with me, Tyson Turner and Jesse Carmichael, but we moved up. And um, I, I, when we got on the team, we played for the Rockies and everybody that was already on the team already had a nickname. And I just thought that was so cool. Like, like one of the guys, his nickname was Chip. Uh, so uh, Chip, man, he was our pitcher. And I remember I went up to Chip. He was kind of like the team captain at the time. And I said, uh, hey, Chip, man, I, I want a nickname. Like, I, I want a nickname. He said, all right. And it was kind of like that scene in Animal House. You remember where they're giving out the Delta Tau Chi names? And I know this isn't a church illustration, but my deacon over here, my elder Doug, he's okay with me talking about Animal House. And they're like, from now on, your Delta Tau Chi name is Mothball. From now on, you're Delta Tau Chi. And he's just making stuff up as he goes down the list. And he gets to Pinto and he says, why Pinto? He says, why not? Right? And so he gives me my nickname and he says, from now on, your name, nickname will be Cricket. <laughs> and I was like, why Cricket? Why not? Right? Like, I think it was because I was so skinny and my legs and my arm looked like Cricket legs. And I think that was why I did. I still have a baseball from my first year of Little League where we won the championship. And it says Cricket is what they wrote on my ball and everything. So that was like my first nickname. My mom's nickname that her dad gave her was Runt. And it's always funny because every time she's called Runt by my dad, and mom always points out, I'm not a Runt anymore. That's what she always says. Uh, so she says, I'm still called Runt. Um, but my favorite nickname story is, is this. It's one I gave my wife. And it's really funny because when I met my wife, uh, I gave her this nickname. And for our very first Christmas, I bought her a stuffed animal of this. And we made it together at Build-A-Bear. And I asked her if I could use it for an illustration in the sermon today. And you know what she told me this week? I threw it away. Oh, everybody say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, my first Christmas present, man, I bought her. But, but I gave her this nickname um, and, and I started calling her Koala Bear. She's my little Koala Bear. 
And um, actually, I didn't have an illustration as the bear. I was going to use that. So I found this picture. It's called the sexy koala bear. And I thought this was the perfect picture for my wife. And so that is my wife, ladies and gentlemen. That is her. That is her. You look up. If you Google, I didn't Google sexy koala bear. Don't worry. Don't worry about your pastor. I didn't Google it. I just Googled koala bear, and that was the first one that came up. And so the reason I nicknamed her koala bear is this. Like People want to know, why do you call her your koala bear? Because I, I, in college, when I was dating her, they talked about this in one of my science classes. They said, you know, koala bears look so cute but they are ferocious. Uh, that's what they taught us. They were like, everybody thinks you want to stay away from a grizzly bear. You know, you want to stay away from a polar bear. They will maul you. And what my, my science teacher in college told me is he says, yeah, them koala bears, everybody thinks are so cute. Them's the most aggressive ones. Them's them. And I thought, what a perfect name for my cute little koala bear because she is cute as she can be, but she is ferocious, ladies and gentlemen. And so how many of you guys are married to a cute little koala bear now? Come on, how many of you can relate to this. So there you go. So listen, we know what it is to get a new name, right? A new name. Let's get back somehow focused on Jesus. <laughs> After all of that, Josie got us in the presence and I took us right out, didn't I, Josie? I took us right out and we went to the zoo. And so um, let, me, uh, let me ask you this question as we get started. Listen, guys, and we're not going to take a whole lot of time on this today. I want to ask you this question. What, what name or names do you carry? Like for real, like, like what do you carry in your life right now? Proverbs chapter 22, verse one. I could not love this verse anymore the way that it is written. It says a good name is to be what? Chosen. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Say this with me. Say, I choose the name I carry. It's a choice. I love the way that it's written there. A good name is to be chosen. I choose to take hold of a good name for my life. And I can't tell you how many people I know that, that you watch their life and you can see that they have chosen the wrong name. They chose it. You know, when we think about the, the, the reason people are named certain things, there are all of these different reasons. There are people in here that you're named after family members and all of this stuff. People ask us all the time. They say, Arabella is such a beautiful name. Where did you get that? And they're expecting me to say my great grandmother's sister's niece and this beautiful story. And I'm like, my wife watched the movie, The Prince and Me, and she liked the name Arabella out of the movie. So that's what we named her. So, you know, we, we name people so differently now than they did in the Bible days. In the Bible days, when someone was named, they they weren't just named that name because they liked the name and they didn't even name the name because it was necessarily a family name. It was actually a prophetic word over the life of who was born. And you can go through the scripture and you can do just a name study if you've never done it. I'm not talking about a name of God. I'm talking about a name of people study and it will blow your mind how God was constantly letting people carry names that went along with what God had put inside of them. And we have to make a choice at some part of our life where we will choose to carry a name that matches what God has put on the inside of me. I don't know if you know this, but the name that you carry will do one of two things for your life. The name that you carry will either strengthen the potential of what can come out of you or it will limit the potential of what will come out of you. But one of the, one of the two will happen based on the name that you carry. The name that you allow to be associated with your life, listen to me, guys. You are giving that name the power to tell you what can come to pass. When you label yourself, and, 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 and listen, I, I get like the, all these names, and we're gonna look at a few of them that we carry. They come from all these different places, but, but, but what we can, what we believe that we can do will be a d direct product of who we say we are. And you've got to find a way to determine who you are in Christ, in God. You've got to find and choose the right name that God wants to place on you. Amen? I want to ask you three questions real quick that are going to make a difference in the name that you carry. Number one, who are you letting name you? Who are you letting name you? 
because all of us have a million different voices that are trying to name us. Some of us, it's a close friend. Some of us, it's a family member. Some of us, it's an enemy. Some of us, it's a doctor. Some of us, it's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And the names that we carry are a, are a direct result of what they are saying about us and what they are actually saying over us. Sometimes the name that impacts us the most, think about this with me. Sometimes the name that, that carries the most weight in our life is a name that is given by a complete stranger. Someone that doesn't even know you, you give them the right to label you and to put something on you that is not the reality of what God has put on the inside of you. We carry names like stupid, depressed, fat, ugly. We carry names like insignificant, worthless. And we're letting all of these people rename us a name that God does not want to name us. One thing that we know to be true in scripture is this. The enemy loves to change the name of God's people. I'm gonna say it again. The enemy loves to change the name of God's people. Daniel chapter one, verse seven, we see this perfect example of that. It says the chief official gave the new names. To Daniel, he gave the name Belt. Belt Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, I don't know why I'm struggling with that, I know this name, to Hananiah, he gave the name Shadrach, to Mishael, he gave the name Meshach, and to Azariah, he gave the name Abendigo. And what we see here is the chief priest of Babylon, who basically, if you don't know what that meant, that meant he was the main leader of the deity worship of the Babylonians, which if you don't know anything about them, that all these gods, they came in and took God's people who had God-given names that were prophetic about their life. And the enemy wanted to uproot God's name for them. And he wanted to plant a name from the enemy. So we see that, that, that Daniel, uh, his name changed from God is my judge. His name changed from that to lady protect my king. It changed the, the, the gender of his name. They, they changed his name to a woman name. And that name that was given to Daniel was a name in celebration of the, one of the gods of the Babylonians. And that was what they wanted Daniel to carry. Hananiah, whose name meant Yahweh has been gracious Yahweh, Yahweh is full of grace, was changed to Shadrach, which means I am fearful of God. So it was somebody who was celebrating the goodness of God and it uprooted that name and it wanted to make people fearful of God. Then we see that Mishael, his name meant no one can compare to my God and then they changed his name to Meshach, which meant I am despised. And we see that Azariah, his name meant Yahweh is my helper. And it changed his name to Abednego, which in the Babylonian culture meant I am a servant of the God Nebo, which was the chief God of the Babylonians. So what the enemy wants to do is he actually wants to uproot your name. He wants to take the name of God's people and he wants to plant a name that is from the enemy. And some of you have been through that. You know what that's like. And you've got to learn to guard the inside. You've got to learn to guard the inside from what the enemy is trying to put into you from the outside. For all these different people in your life. I wrote this down, write this down. I think this is really good. This would be a good Twitter moment. Don't let the people, don't let what people can't see in you talk about what you know is inside of you. Talk, talk you out of what you know is inside of you. Don't let the people who can't see what is inside of you talk you out of what you know is inside of you. You know there's something there and the enemy wants to talk you out of that by putting new names. I wrote this down for myself. I said, John, stop answering to the wrong name. Come on, what are you answering to? That will tell you who you are. Don't answer to the wrong name. In fact, when somebody calls out stupid to you, even if they're just joking around, look around and be like, I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> but when they say, what's up, tall, dark, and handsome, even if it's a stranger at the mall that you don't even know, say, hey, 
You must be calling out for me, right? Answer to the right names. Respond to the right names. Who is naming you? Number two, write this question down. Is the name you carry connected to God's word? This is the best filter that I could give you to compare whatever name you carry. Is it connected to God's word? I don't know if you know this, but in scripture, God named a lot of the kids. The parents didn't name them. Mom and dad didn't name them. God named them. Some of the kids God named decades before they were even born. He had already given them the name. Well, in one case, Jesus, it was, his name was given hundreds of years before he was born. So these names were given by God. So, so, so you need to understand that the name that I carry, it should be attached to the word that God has given me. For example, Isaac was a name that was given by God, if you didn't know that. Abraham didn't pick it. Sarah didn't pick it. God picked it because Isaac meant joy. And why was he gonna be named joy? Because they had been through so much hard time. God wanted to give a name that was connected to the word of God. So every time they thought about that baby Isaac, God was reminding them it's joy, it's joy, it's joy. It's connected to God's word. Solomon, those of you who don't know, Solomon means peace. Solomon was born out of the most chaotic experience in scripture. It was a moment that had murder, rape, a death of a baby, all of that in the story of Solomon's birth. But yet here comes Solomon out of all the craziness and it was connected back to the word of God and that was peace, was the word. We see there's a, a king named Josiah. Josiah, his name was given 32 years before he was even born. And Josiah was the son of a really evil king. And his name meant my God will heal because at all the bad stuff that was happening to the people of God, God was raising up a king that was a direct response to the prophetic voices of those times that God was using men and women to give prophetic word. God's coming back and he's gonna heal this. He's gonna to fix this and God even sent a name and it wasn't just a name it was them understanding what God's word was and it was connecting God's word let me ask you a question the name that you believe about yourself can you show it to me where God calls his people that in here because we carry a lot of names that God would never call his people and I'm not telling you there are times where God calls people out because he do, but in those moments, there are moments where they need to repent and come back to God. You've got to carry the right name and it should be attached to the word of God for your life. And when you get a name or a label and it is not attached to God's word, you need to cast it out right then and say, nope, this is not God's word for me. Number three, the third question you need to ask yourself is this. Is my name connected to my past my circumstances, or my destiny. Because this is another really big struggle. How many of you guys know what it is in this room right now to be labeled by your past? We know what that is. I still to this day have people come up to me in this community because you gotta remember, one of the reasons I never wanted to come back is I never wanted to put up with people who wouldn't believe that I was a pastor now. And I still have people that come up to me and they just look at me and they're like, I just still, I just don't even know how you became a pastor. <laughs> like, I just still can't even believe that you are preaching the word of God in front of people. <laughs> because listen to me, here's the reality. Some people will only see, will only see you by what you have been. Yeah. Some people will only recognize you as what you did. Perfect example of this being labeled by our past is the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. They bring her to Jesus and they don't even give her a name. They say she was caught, past tense. She was caught, defined by her past and brings her to Jesus. But I love the fact that they brought a woman who was in a very dark place because of a dark past, but they brought her into the light. <laughs> because God will take us in our darkness and in our past and we will get into the presence of Jesus and no longer do I have to be defined by my past. 
Many people believe that the woman who was caught in the act of adultery was the same woman that broke the alabaster jar over the feet of Jesus. Many people believe that the same woman that was caught in the act of adultery was the first one that got to see resurrected Christ. She was in that group of ladies. Why? Because in that moment, one encounter with Jesus took a woman who was defined by her past and no longer was she defined by her past, but now she was defined by her destiny. In fact, when she breaks the alabaster jar, does anybody remember what Jesus says? From now on, anytime the word of God is spoken, this will be honored. That's what he told her. It wasn't about her past. It was about the destiny that God had for her. And you've got to be willing to let go of what was and look ahead at what will be in Christ. The second thing that holds us is, is our, our present because it wasn't just about past experiences. It's also about present circumstances that try to label us. Perfect example of this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The woman with the issue of blood. She isn't the woman who had the issue of blood. And still to this day, how do we label her? Even though she was healed, we still call her the woman with the issue of blood. And that's just a dumb thing to say because she wasn't the woman with the issue of blood after she had an encounter with Jesus. But this is a woman that, that when they bring her to Jesus, she is presently in the middle of a bad name. But all it took was one encounter with Jesus. Because does anybody remember when she touched, she reached out and she touched the hem of Jesus's garment? Does anybody remember what Jesus said next? Who touched me? He wanted a name to go with what had just happened. Think about it. He said, who touched me? He didn't, he didn't turn around and say, which one of you? He said, who? He wanted a name to go with it. And, and the Bible says that woman was fearful because everybody was tattletaling on her and, they was, and she wasn't supposed to do that, Jesus, and she did it anyway. And you know, this woman right here broke the rules and all of this stuff. And Jesus turned around and he walked over to her after he was asking the who question. And, and here's the woman that they called the woman with the issue of blood but when Jesus said, who touched me? And Jesus turned around to her. What did he say? You are made whole. So her identity changed in a moment in the presence of Jesus. It was no longer the woman with the issue of blood, but now what is my name? I am whole. That's who I am. I'm made whole. Or what about future experiences? See, what the enemy wants you to do is he doesn't want you to see the future that God has for you. And he wants you to carry labels now that will, that will defect your future in him. Example of that, David. David is anointed king of Israel by the prophet. He says, you're gonna be the next king. And David, after that moment, he carries the identity of a king. How do we know that? Because when David went out to battle, David gets there and he looks out when his brothers and all of them are in that battle and there is a giant on the other side named Goliath. And he is making fun of them and he is talking about their God. And what does David say? David says, what will be done for the man that kills this giant? And one of the other soldiers raises his hand and says, let me tell you what will be done. You will get to marry the king's daughter. And David says, well, ain't that funny because that is attached to the word of God for my life. Come on, somebody. God just told me I was gonna be king. I don't know how in the world I'm gonna go from a shepherd field to being in the kingdom. Wait a minute, now I get it. He's fixing to open up this door for me. So in that moment, do you know what David's name became when he was standing on that battlefield? All of a sudden, David didn't just say, oh, I'm king one day. David says, well, I'm king, that's my destiny. The one who kills this giant is gonna to get to marry the king's daughter. So I guess right now my name must be giant killer because that is attached to the word of God for my life. See, it's not even just for the long-term stuff, man. Even along the journey, you've gotta be able to connect the things that God is trying to bring together and say, well, right now, today, my name must be Giant Killer. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm Giant Killer today because it's attached to my destiny. That is attached to what God is telling me that I'm gonna become. And then what happens after that? What happens? His brothers come to him and what do they say? Who do you think you are? That is their exact words. Who do you think you are? And David says, I'm the giant killer because killing that giant is attached to the kingdom and the kingdom has already been given to me. And so I must be a giant killer. 
So you've got to guard yourself from your past that you're struggling with, some of you. You've got to guard yourself from your present. And you, you cannot let the enemy warp what you see in your future in Christ. Come on, somebody. Is that good stuff today? That's good. Dad, you can come on up. I'm gonna get you to do something in about two minutes, but real quick, I'm, I'm not gonna go through all this like I did in the first service. If you wanna hear more details about this stuff, you can look it up in the first service. Go back and watch it. I'm trying to, to give you time to respond here at the end. Um, there are three names. Well, I believe God wants to change a lot of names and all throughout scripture, I could do this for hours, but there are three names that we see in scripture that God changes that I think he wants to change for every one of you. And I want you to know these. Number one, I think that God wants to change everybody's name at some point or another, change our name from hearer to the rock. He wants to change my name from hearer to the rock. Where do I get this? I get this from Peter. When Jesus has his first encounter with Peter, he says, you are Simon. He says, but you will be Peter. That was their first conversation. And Peter walks with Jesus and his name never changes. And then they get to Matthew chapter 16. And the Bible says that finally, when Peter recognized who Christ was, that Jesus looked at Peter and he says, Simon, he calls him Simon to start it out. He says, this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the spirit. And he says, and now I declare that you are no longer Simon, but now I change your name from Simon, which means the hearer to Peter. And he says, and on this rock, and Peter means rock, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And whatever you bind up in heaven will be bound up. And whatever you loose in heaven will be loosed. And he goes on to give him all of that. But the point was this, there came a moment, listen to me guys, hear me, where you stop just being a hearer and you become the rock. There are a lot of you right now that you come into church week in and week out and you are a hearer. And that's a good thing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying being a hearer is a bad thing. It's a good thing. We have to be hearers. But faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the word. But there comes a point where my name is not just here. I'm not just listening. But now all of a sudden I'm stepping into my identity in the kingdom. And some of you need to have that name change. The second name change that I have that everybody needs to to see changed in their life is um, found in Genesis 32, if you wanna write it down. But um, God wants to change your name from being the grasper of the heel to being an overcomer. This is the story of Jacob fighting, wrestling with God and telling God, I will not let go until you bless me. His name, Jacob, meant the heel grabber. Why? Because he was born about two seconds after his brother Esau. They were twins. And for those of us that hear his name was heel grabber, you want to go, isn't that cute? He's your little heel grabber. He was reaching out. He was grabbing his brother's heel when he was born. What a cute little baby story to tell, right? But man, if you're Jacob and you're the heel grabber, you know what he hears when he hears that? Not some cute little story. Jacob hears, I'm insignificant. Jacob hears, I'm not the blessed one. Jacob hears, I'm not favored. Jacob hears, I'm worthless because of two seconds different in birth. But God changes his name from being hill grabber to being Israel. God's chosen, the overcomers. And there comes a point where you've got to let go of that name being the hill grabber. I'm insignificant, I'm nobody, I'm worthless. I'm not favored. You've got to let that name go and you've got to be willing to take hold of your name. I'm an overcomer. Come on, this is good stuff. The third name that everybody should experience a name change in is God should take your name from barren to fruitful. And we see this with Abram. Genesis 11 and 12 tells me he's gonna have a kid. We get to Genesis 17, still no kid. They're like a million years old. No baby, they've given up. They're laughing about it in their tent, like making fun of the fact, like they are literally making fun of the fact they believe God could give them a baby. They're like laughing about it in the tent. And God comes on the scene and in a conversation with Abram, he says, no longer will your name be Abram, but now your name will be Abraham, which means the father of many nations. So now Abraham comes home and he looks at Sarah and he says, oh, by the way, I'm not 
John anymore. I'm Johnum. <laughs> Two whole letter change, right? God can do a lot with a little change. Come on, somebody, that'll preach, won't it? And he says, my name is Abraham. I'm the father of many nations. And now all of a sudden, everywhere that Abraham goes, they don't call him Abram, they call him Abraham. And every day that he walks and he goes, man, I don't know if God can do this. And somebody says, yo, Abraham. Oh yeah, I'm the father of many nations. He started to hear it everywhere that he went. And he came home to his wife. Can you imagine, ladies, if you came home, can you imagine, Evelyn, if Tommy came home tomorrow and says, by the way, you're no longer Evelyn, you are now Sally. Because that's what Abraham did. He came home to Sarah and he's like, I'm gonna change your name too. You're now the princess is what he calls her. You're the princess. And she, I don't feel like a princess. He says, yeah, but every time you hear it now, I'm gonna let you know you are a princess. What does that mean? I'm a daughter of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he renames her. Listen, and they go from being the barren ones to being the fruitful ones and the father of many nations. Why? And it happened when they changed their name. Here's what's crazy. When they changed their name, this is the way I believe it. We know that they had Isaac in less than a year from the name change. I believe the moment that Abraham received his name change and the moment Sarah received her name change is the moment the promise came to pass in their life. And all of a sudden, for the first time, boom, there he is. And it all started with a name change. God wants to change your name. I wanna get the band to come up. 29 minutes, David Newberry. How you like them apples? Man. Change our name, oh God. I want you to remain seated while they're getting ready because I want to read you a list of things that the Bible calls you. I want you to get your name tag out. In a moment, I want you to write down on your name tag, every one of you got a name tag that says, hello, my name is. And you may could go ahead and fill that out. Some of you may want to write your old name on top and scratch it out just so you can see it and write your new name below it. Or maybe you just want to write your new name today and I want you to put it on your chest and I want you to stand up proudly with it in just a moment and I want every person that sees you on the way out, I don't want them to look at you and say, hey, Kristen, how are you? I want them to look and read that name tag and I want you to call them out by what name God is giving them today. But here's a few of the things, and maybe these will help you pick something to write down. Here's a few of the names the Bible calls you. John chapter 15, verse 15 says, I am a friend of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4 says, I am chosen by God. I'm not an accident, I'm chosen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, I am his workmanship. I am a handmade piece of art. Come on, somebody. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, I am the temple, the residence of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am his messenger. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, I am greatly loved. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, I am free indeed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, I am a brand new creation. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says, I am more than a conqueror. Come on. I want you to think about it, pray about it, write it down. And if any of these names, I'm gonna read through this list again and I wanna celebrate you. If there are any one of these things that anybody in this room, if you need to know this about yourself, I'm asking you to respond right now by standing up when I read the word. Let me show you what I mean, watch. Is there anybody here that you just need to know that you are a friend of God right now? Is there anybody here that you would stand up right now and just say, man, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with that relational side of my relationship with God. Come on, is there anybody that would stand up and say, I need that? That's all right. There you go, come on, right here. Let's celebrate, church. Put your hands together. No, stay standing, stay standing. Come on, you are a friend of God. Come on, is there anybody here that needs to know, man, I'm chosen. I'm not an accident. Is there anybody here that's here that you feel like an accident? Come on, Brandy, right there. You are chosen. Right here, Betty, you are chosen. You are not an accident. You are chosen. Nancy, you're chosen. You're chosen right here. Come on. What about this? I am his workmanship. Stay, stay standing. Stay standing. Stay standing. I'm his workmanship. Anybody. I'm, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Right here, Tiffany. You are a piece of art, handmade by God. Anybody else you need to know that I am his workmanship created for good things? Good things. Anything. All right, here we go. What about this one? 1 Corinthians 6:19. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Is there anybody that just feels sometimes you're just empty of God and you just need to know by faith right now, stand up and say, I know God is in me. Come on, is there anybody that would say, I know God is in me. I know that he's in me. Come on, right here, right here. Thank you, Barbara. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right back there, we got a brand new baby that is crying when I call that out. Right now, Alex and Julie, the temple of the Holy Spirit right there. You better believe it. Come on, I'm not, I'm not, I believe it. I believe it. First time in church, already responding. Come on, somebody. Acts chapter one, verse eight says, I am his messenger. Stay standing, everybody, stay standing. Anybody need to know that God can use me? Anybody need to, right now, God wants to use you. You are God's, you spoke this week. Come on, for the first, come on. On Thursday, you are God's messenger. Who are you? Come on, you are God's messenger. Thank you, God, you are God's messenger. You know that. Come on, what about this one? I am God's child. Galatians chapter three, verse 26. I'm a child of God. Anybody need to know that right now? Come on, you are a child of God. Come on, who else? I'm a child of God. Anybody else need to stand up and say that? What about this one? I am greatly loved. Romans chapter five, verse eight. I am greatly loved. Come on, you are loved by God. Come on, you are loved, Becky. Come on, Becky, all the way in from Hawaii. Come on, come on. Those of you that don't know, Becky pastors our Hawaii campus. Um, and we are glad she's here. You are loved, girl. You are loved. What about this one? John chapter eight, verse 36. I am free indeed. How many needs to just say that over their life right now? I am free. Anybody need to stand up and say, that's who I am. I am free indeed. Thank you. I am free indeed. Come on, who else? Who else? What about this one? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Anybody need to stand up right now and just declare, I'm a new creation. The old me is gone. I'm new in Christ. Anybody need to say that right now? The enemy's trying to throw your past in your face and you're saying, no, 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 I am a new creation in Christ. Anybody right there? Come on, you are a new creation. Come on, that's it, man. You are a new creation. Right there, you are a new creation. Lois, you are a new creation. Who else? Right here, new creation, new creation. What about this one? Romans chapter eight, verse 37, I am more than a conqueror. Anybody right now, you are more than a conqueror. Come on, anybody else need to stand up? Come on now, anybody else that was able to write down any other name, why don't you stand up with me? Come on, put it on, put it on, put it on. Say, this is who I am. Come on, say, look at somebody around you and read their tag to them. Come on, do you have a tag? Did you write it down? Somebody write down, what does yours say, Terry? Warrior bride, that's who you are. Come on, tell somebody that's who they are. Come on, everybody in the house, stand up. Come on, everybody stand up, everybody on your feet. Come on, let's worship God now for who God has called us to be. And if you're here and you need to let the old you die, why don't you write it down and bring it up here? Write down the old you and bring it up here. Say, this this label, this name, this is not me now. This is not me, I'm laying.